Today we're going to be talking about honoring the ancestors. This is such a fundamental part of heathen practice. I mean, we talk as heathens about restoring and recreating our ancestral traditions, but what does that really mean? I mean, there is a part of that that is, it's not in the head, it's in the gut, it's in the blood, it's in the bone, it's on the ground. It's connecting to the dead, to those that came before us, to those that practiced and lived these traditions at one point before the onslaught of Christianity. So Galena, when did you start working with the ancestors? It was long and hard. Most people find it much easier to connect to the ancestors than to connect um, to the gods, but for me it was the opposite. So it actually took me a good 10, 12 years. I would say I started maybe 12 years ago after a rather intense encounter with Hela, um, our goddess of death and goddess of the underworld who takes care of our dead. Um, I was chided somewhat for doing the work that I'm doing and paying no heed to, to my dead. Who was I? To be, to, be, to be holding rituals and, and working the runes and, and weaving weird, but never paying any respect to the dead. So I learned very quickly because that's what you do when Hella shows up. And I started struggling to make a connection with my dead, but it was always so much easier to hear the gods. So it wasn't until my adopted mother died um, quite recently uh, that it really clicked into place. And I can say with some small measure of pride that I have a really strong ancestral house, but it's definitely been a process. What can the average person do to honor their dead? Well, we all have ancestors, so there's all, we all have someone that we can honor. This is something, our dead are there for us. They want us to succeed, they're in our court. So if you do nothing else, you can reach out to them, you can talk to them. Maybe if you have the space, if you're living on your own, you can set up a shrine or an altar with pictures of your dead, with offerings of, of flowers, of water, of food, of drink, whatever you think they would like. I mean, they'll guide you in this process. They're, they're right there just waiting for you to reach out. We, we carry the connection to them in our blood and in our skin and, and in, our, in our veins and our bones. So simply being consistent it's less what you do and more that you are consistent about doing something that's important. I mean, if every day you get up and you say, I hail my ancestors, or hey, Grandma, this is what's going on with me today. You know, when I get up, I usually spend some time talking to my mother and my other dead, mm -hmm. and I'll set out coffee for them, or, or in the evenings, I'll share a glass of wine with my dead, and I'll tell them about my day and I hold regular, uh, fairly public ancestor rituals to help other people learn how to connect with their dead too. But in the end, it doesn't matter what you do, just that you're doing something and that you're trying in some way to reach out and forge that connection. And eventually it takes over and the dead will start guiding that and telling you what they want and it all comes together. So what about people who are adopted? Oh, that's great. That's one of the most common questions that I get. And uh, you have four, let me see if I can count properly, you have four ancestral lines. You have your biological, maternal, and paternal lines, and your adopted maternal and paternal lines. You don't need to know the names of your ancestors to honor them. They know you. And by ancestors, that's not just people connected to you by blood. Adoption is just as powerful a connection. My most powerful ancestor is my adopted mother. And then there are friends and mentors. They can be included in your ancestral house too. I mean, ancestor, yes, we start with those usually that are connected to us by blood, but there's also a category of ancestor that's connected to us by a bond of heart and spirit, and that is just as important. For some of us, our family is the family that we have created for ourselves, in addition to our biological ties. And what about folks whose blood family is problematic in some way? We all have them. I don't care what your ancestral line is like. We all have that one ancestor that you just really don't want to be calling forth. That's okay. Go around them. 
that's what I tell people to do. Normally when you're doing ancestor work, one or two ancestors are going to come forward to really put your house in order. We talk about getting your ancestral house in order. For me, it was my adopted mother and my biological grandmother, and they got that in, in right good order. There's usually one or two ancestors that will navigate things. If you have the obnoxious or the abusive or the unpleasant dead person, just go around them. Honor the dead that you can love and respect. Call out to your ancestors. If the last couple of generations were really problematic, go around them. Go further back. At some point in your line, it was healthy. You know, we live in a very, in a world that is very much out of balance. And that shows forth in our family ties and our family relationships mo almost more than anywhere else. And restoring some type of working reciprocal relationship with your dead is a way of healing your family line as well. So if the immediate generations are too wounded or, or in some way too out of balance to work with in a healthy fashion, go further back. We have ancestors right back to the time when the first mammal crawled out of the water and said, let me try this land living thing. We can go that far back. That's a lot of dead people that know your name. <laughs>